So our story begins around maybe more than 2,000 years ago. A group of uh, Roman soldiers are uh, standing next to the fire in the Roman legion uh, camp next to the mountain of Masada. They are tired, they are cold, and uh, they are hungry. Uh, they've been fighting for many days, and one of them decides he's going to improve the situation. He decides to cook something for them. So he mixes up uh, some grains and some water, puts it on the, on the fire, it starts bubbling, and then the, this uh, mixture becomes a sticky stew. The sticky stew uh, gets inside their stomachs, and suddenly the cold goes away, they re-energize, they regroup, and they are ready to go fight again. Back then, the Roman legions, and that's something I've learned not, not uh, a while ago, back then the Roman legion used to call that uh, sticky stew polenta. That was the name in, in ancient Italian. So, for the last few years, my colleagues and I, we've been uh, opening restaurants. That's what we do. We've, we've, built, uh, we've opened six restaurants till now, and uh, five of them are here in the city of Jerusalem. And the recent one we've opened in the center of London, in the UK. Um, in each... <laughs> Thank you. That's the one in the middle, up there. Um, in each and every restaurant I open and I own, I choose the color of the walls, I choose the fabric for the bar stools, I choose the cutlery, the, the music that people hear, I try and touch every small aspect, I, um, I, I try and, and, and influence everything in all of my restaurants and, and deal with the small details, and I've cooked, I've written, and I've erased more than a hundred menus. And after all that attention, and after being in my, in my, doing that career for so long, I feel I'm only at the beginning of my journey. And my journey, for me personally, is the journey looking for my culinary legacy. My journey, my journey began around, uh, not around, 20 years ago when I was a, a young cook, and um, I started looking for, for the legacy. And my journey began at foreign countries, in libraries, in study halls, but pretty soon my journey shifted here to Israel, shifted into kitchens, hot stoves, sharp knives, pilot lights, and I pretty soon realized that as a person that was born, raised, and lived all his life, and now raising his own family in the city of Jerusalem, if I want to find my culinary legacy, I should start looking for it here, in Jerusalem. So where to look? I was, uh, I think, I was thinking maybe sh I should look in, uh, in um, authentic or aromatic begale in the old city, or maybe uh, sweet kegel in Mea Shearim, or should I go with the uh, all sides included uh, burekas from Musa burekas in, uh, in Jaffa Road? Maybe just a chunky hummus with a laffa. But realizing without all these amazing dishes, without all these amazing recipes that are so Jerusalemite and so local for me, things don't add, add up in my mind, or in my case, in my stomach. So I went to look for the origin for these well-known, well-loved, so popular dishes. I went, and I, I went on a quest searching. And in my quest, I, I uh, stumbled upon a quote from Mishnah Avot on a wall of an, this amazing small bakery next to one of my restaurants. I'll let you read it by yourself. And I especially like the last part. Whereas I get up and find all these things done for me. You can imagine why I like that part, but um, to be honest, our ancestors, they didn't, have, they didn't have things so easy. It wasn't, they couldn't go to Rami Levy and buy a loaf of bread. They had to grow the weed themselves. They had to, to search, grow, hunt their own food. And I started searching, how did they do that? And uh, realizing that situation here back then wasn't that easy like in Europe because rain doesn't, it doesn't rain here as much as in Europe. Water is not that common. Roots, fruits, vegetables, even animals are more rare here. So I found that our ancestors were pretty smart. They had wheat. Wheat was the, the most common thing they had to eat, to produce flour from. So they used the wheat throughout the year in order to have food and, and, and uh, nourish themselves throughout the year, they used the wheat very smartly. I learned that they used to pick it when, uh, only at the beginning when it grew, when it was still green, just pick it from the field and eat the stalks. Pre pretty tasty, you should try it one time. 
and, uh, and they used to call it spring, or, or the Arabs called it uh, Gamal Akdar. Then later on, when it's dried, they used to pick the stalks and, and the whole, the whole uh, plant, and then make big piles in the field and light fires around it. So the smoke from the fire used to preserve the grains of the weed. That way they could collect the grains and keep them throughout the year because the smoke stops their maturing and, and they, then they could mill it later on the year. After taking out the grains, they, used to, they gave them to the miller and the millers milled them into fine flour, giving the flour back to the families to cook their bread or bake their bread or uh, back then the habes or the lafa, uh, as we know it now, the bagel or the strudel. But the millers found an amazing thing. In the milling stone, there was something left. The grain of the wheat, the, the center of the wheat could not be grinded because te of technology reasons. It wasn't sharp enough, they couldn't grind it. And they found out that the center of the wheat, which then they called semolina, is the best part of the wheat, the sweetest, the one you can bake the most amazing and cook the most amazing dishes from. It was so precious that the millers sold it very, very, in a very high price, and it, it was so precious that it became a sacrifice in the temple. Um, the, the, the priest would uh, pour honey and oil over the, over the semolina and then praise it, and it was so precious and so well-loved that even after the destruction of the temple, it, uh, the, the habit became that you cook a sweet semolina cake, or as my, mother, the, my, my dear partner Uri's mother called it basbusa, that's her basbusa, by the way. Um, they would bake this special, this special cake in, in special events or for special people. That's the way from the, the roots, the journey for the grain of the wheat being picked in the field, becoming a habit or a, a, a legacy of a, of, a, of a country or of a group of people. That uh, understanding this roots uh, was mind-blowing for me, and it made me feel that my journey as a young chef is totally connected to the journey of the grain of the wheel. My, my journey is the journey of the, of the spring and the gamma el akda and of the freaky, the green, the green wheat, um, and, and realizing that this is my journey along the 2,000 years of wandering of people bringing here to Israel all these amazing products, like the grain of the wheat, like the, the, the semolina cake, like the polenta, like the corn, like the potatoes, and you can go on in your mind about all these amazing products they brought here, and what the chamin we all eat, it, it was all brought here. So realizing that taught me a lesson of utmost importance. It taught me a lesson that in the kitchen, like in science, like in art, like in literature, you cannot start something new without being zealous to the ancient and the wise. You do not have a path without a starting point. You do not have a tree of, of fruits without a soil and, and a seed. I don't have a restaurant in the center of London without Kube in Machne Yudha Market. That was the lesson I learned. So, six years ago, just opened my restaurant, my first one. Super excited, all of us in the kitchen. The restaurant is packed. We didn't expect so many people. Even my parents didn't have a place to sit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and um, and um, I'm, I'm looking at the fridges, and the chefs behind me, they say, chef, we're running out of food. And I'm, in about a minute, I have to go out and, and tell people they have to leave the restaurant because I have nothing to give them. So I shout back to the chefs, what do we have left on the storage? And they say, we got uh, some corn, some asparagus, some mushrooms. We qu quickly made a polenta and we had no plates to serve it in, because we were just open and we, we, we didn't buy enough plates. So I caught a glimpse of uh, some pickle jars. We just got that morning to make some pickles, and I, in a moment of probably craziness, I told my sous chef, just wash them, we put the hot polenta in them and served it in, in, the, in the jar. That, that was the birth of Machne Yudha's famous polenta. Yeah. Yeah. And, a man whose work is ass off for 20 years and then one jar gets applause. <laughs> so, uh, from that day, thousands of polenta dishes went out in pickle jars uh, from, from uh, Talbir and from Hebron Road, from Machne Yuda and from London. 
And when it all comes down and I sit down with myself and the noise of the kitchen and the pressure goes down and memories start pouring in, I, uh, I, I remember myself as a young child and I remember my mother cooking a polenta-like porridge, sweet polenta-like porridge for me. And I was sitting and eating it so slowly in circles because I liked it so much and I didn't want to get to the last spoon in the center. And I, it, that, it, it is this moment that makes me realize I chose in that stressful moment to make a polenta because of that memory, memory of the child eating that unfinishing porridge. And it, in that moment I realized that I am made from what I was. As a chef I am made from what my ancestors were. I am the 2,000 years of wandering. I am the matzah. I am the dates that come from Jericho. And I am the olives that grow in the Ella. I am the fish that are caught in the shores of Gaza and Jaffa. I am the hunter, and I break down the meat. I am the grinder, and I'm the baker. I go 40 years in the desert, and I bring the clusters to the promised land. I'm the Roman soldier at the feet of Masada, and I'm the last man barricaded in the temple. I'm a slave, and I'm a priest. I'm a poet and a believer. I've been banished, and I've returned. I'm wandering, but I'm a settler. I'm the porridge, and I'm the polenta. I'm the basbusa, and I'm the strudel. I'm Kube, and I'm sushi. <laughs> Everything has already been said. More than that, everything has already been cooked. <laughs> but only when I truly respect and master the legacies before me, then I start creating a legacy of my own. Thank you.